I am Thomas, and uh, we are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we will be traveling to the Kensington area of Pennsylvania. We'll be discussing one of the most notorious individuals from Pennsylvania, visiting her neighborhood and hopefully getting a shot a view of her former home. Her name is Marie Knoll. Marie Knoll was born Marie Liddy August 23rd, 1928 in the Kensington neighborhood, Kensington, call it section, of Philadelphia to Ella and James Liddy. That is the former house. That is her husband, who we will introduce very quickly here as we continue with our story. So Marie was born to Ella and James Liddy. Now Marie was one of several children born of her parents' troubled marriage. Marie, she contracted scarlet fever at the age of five. Now Marie, because she had contracted scarlet fever, she later later credited that scarlet fever as the cause of her learning difficulties. Now she dropped out of school as a young teenager to work and help care for a niece born to one of her older sisters when Marie was 12 and raised as Marie's sister. They see a picture of Marie Liddy with one of her children. Now Marie Liddy and Arthur Knoll, Arthur Knoll passed away in 2009, They met in a club in West Kensington, section of Philadelphia. And then on June 1st of 1948, after a brief courtship, the couple would elope. The couple proceeded to have 10 children. 10 children. What a blessing, right? Some people have have a hard time just to have one. And they try for, you know, long periods of time, uh, you know, they go through, you know, various injections and they go through, uh, you know, they pay for fertilization and, you know, it's just a, a a hard process. So, Marie, they had ten children. Now, all of these children died between the ages of five days and fourteen months. So you hear, now let's say that again, couple, Marie and her husband, had 10 children, all of whom died between the ages of five days and 14 months. During the cesarean birth of her last child, Marie suffered a uterine rupture and she went underwent a hysterectomy now you hear stories of you know when couples try to get pregnant there's a lot of you know, some have numerous uh, miscarriages 
in this one story was kind of the opposite where all of, she was able to have children and they died between the ages of five days and 14 months. See, you wouldn't, like, if you ever go, if you ever look back in the records of the olden days, of you know, back in the, let's just say 1800s, it was very common for children uh, to die young. Back then, it was a common thing. So, in 1963, Life magazine, they had published kind of a sympathetic article on her story, on Marie Knowles' story. And this was during the time um, they, they, they used the name Martha and Andrew Moore. They didn't use um, Marie and her husband's real name. They just used it under an assumed name. And this is, at that time, six, children, six of her children had died. So in Life magazine, they had written an article. At that time, Marie and her, hus- uh, and her uh, husband had lost six children. Six. So, in 1963, there was kind of kind of a, and that's Marie and her husband again. From 1963, the doctor, there was a doctor, and he spoke with Marie. Um. And at that point, I believe it was like uh, that she had, she was 38 and she had eight children, none of whom um, had, well, let's rephrase that. You know, from an article in 1963, the number gets a little bit blurry here. I believe this might have been a misprint. But in 1963, a doctor, he wanted to know why, what was happening. So he wanted to speak with Marie. And at that time, the doctor wanted to know why. He said there has to be a cause. And they're still trying to find it. And he was the the doctor that was working with Marie Knoll. And this is after the child. Um, uh, he m- was dealing with Marie after one of her children died by o- only only lived six uh, hours. Now Marie and her husband uh, believe that their seven child. The couple at the time buried their seventh child, January 8th, and that child lived longer than any of the children, a little more than six months. Now, Teresa, the woman's eighth child, you know, back then in, uh, based on this article, 1963, had lived only six hours. Now Marie back then, when she was speaking with the doctor based on this transcript, said, well, quote, I guess we weren't meant to have babies. And Marie was quoted as saying, she was quoted as saying this after being told of the eighth death. She was accepting the death stoically, no emotion. The doctor back then said, if only we could find the answer. Then they'd have a story and profession that would, uh, you know, they would have a story that would benefit the profession and people who have been losing children. Little Teresa weighed over five and a half pounds and was not, and was not, you know, the, the, when when delivery took place, uh, it took place uh, two months before, uh, two, uh, it took place rather, I'm sorry, it took place 
two weeks before Marie's original due, due date. Following uh, the infant's death, an autopsy showed signs of an abnormality of the blood. And this was back then listed as the possible cause of death. Now, the other children, they showed no signs of such abnormality. Of the others, one was stillborn, three died in the first month of life, and one lived five months. The autopsies had failed to show a definite cause of the deaths of the infants. So even back then, they were examining this as to what was going on. And it was kind of left alone after the examination as kind of being attributed to SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. And that's where it was left. Just full sympathy for Marie and what she was going through. We fast forward now. Years gone by, decades, decades gone by. There was a 1997 book called The Death of Innocence. About a New York woman by the name of Juanita Hoyt. And a investigative article, Cradled to the Grave, by Stephen Freed, as we approach in the block of the home that Marie Knoll lived in. This is how the block looks right now. And ugh, usually this happens and don't want to be a creep and keep on riding around the block, make myself noticeable. Um, there was literally a bunch of people in front of the house. So we can't stop, but this is how the street looks. This is how the block looks like right now. Uh, as we're going around the block. And I will just insert a Google shot of how the home looks like currently. That is the home. That's where Marie Knoll lived. So there is a 1997 book and an investigative article, Cradle to the Grave, Stephen Freed, that appeared in April of 1998 issue of the Philadelphia Magazine. Stephen Freed, he turned over his investigation results to the Philadelphia Police Department. Now, he had wrote, written about Marie Knoll. Remember, he was skeptical about Marie Knoll. This happened, you know, public record, you know, this happened years earlier. It's now 1997. So the police, they wanted to speak with Marie Knoll. And Marie Knoll admitted to suffocating four of her children. She stated that she could not remember what happened to the other four children who died under similar circumstances. Quote, in her confession, now I'll tell you uh, that this is not for the faint of heart, obviously. Part of the confession, she said, killing the children was easy. In regards to 31-day-old Richard Allen, which was her son, which she killed, he couldn't tell me what was bothering him. He just kept crying. I put him on his belly instead of his back in his bassinet, and there was a pillow under his face. Then I took my hand and pressed his face down into the pillow until he stopped moving. 
Five-month-old Elizabeth Marie fought back briefly. Elizabeth was a lot stronger than Richard was, and she was fighting when the pillow was over her face. I held the pillow over her face until she stopped moving. And so it went, one after another, as Marie Knoll just demolished eight of her children between 1949 and 1968. They ranged in age from 13 days to 14 months. After 30 years of denials, in which she lied not only to the authorities, but to her husband, she admitted killing the children. Two others died, one at birth and one apparently of natural causes six hours after birth. Now, Marie, what she did, she agreed, she agreed to plead guilty. And in exchange for pleading guilty to eight counts of second-degree murder, Marie was sentenced to 20 years probation. 20 years probation. At that time, she was 70 years old. She would remain under electronically monitored house arrest for the first five years, and she was to go undergo psychiatric treatment to determine why she did what she did. Noel said in a police statement, all I can figure out is that I am ungodly sick. I never had the money to get help and I didn't know where to go for help anyway. At her sentencing, and as she was dressed in white slacks that day when she was sentenced, she said that she wanted to confront her responsibility and to discover the causes of her repeated acts, killing her, her children. She said... They all seem to go very fast. Her husband, at that time, was 78 years old. When he was at the courtroom doing the sentencing, his head slumped in his hands. He had stood by his wife for three decades as police tried to make a case against her. Can you imagine that? She pled guilty in 1999. She has since croaked. And well, we just hope that she's having a miserable time wherever she is now.